Hey everybody, it's Charlie Craven with Fly Fisherman Magazine. And for the June-July edition, I'm gonna tie Josh Smitherman's Dragon Nymph. Josh comes from Texas and he's got some really cool patterns and this is one of his best. Come along with me and we'll tie one up. Hey, it's Charlie Craven. And today for Fly Fisherman Magazine, I'm going to tie Josh Smitherman's Dragon Nymph. This is a uh, pretty innovative little fly from a pretty innovative tire. Um, I've, I've met Josh before and I got to spend a little bit of time with him this past weekend at the Denver Fly Fishing Show um, and kind of got a little sneak peek through some of his boxes and uh, while this Dragon Nymph is pretty innovative and uh, unique um, after taking a peek through his boxes he's got an awful lot of really cool stuff so he's a guy to, uh, to keep an eye on um, he's got some cool stuff, and there's a, there's a lot of it coming down the pipe. Um, but I'm going to tie for you today this dragon nymph, which has got this really cool body um, that is, you know, an exact replica of a dragon nymph's, you know, giant uh, kind of tapered abdomen. And he's figured out a cool way to do it, and I'm going to show you how. Uh, so with that, we're going to get started. So I'm going to start with a, uh, uh, a Hannock 450. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is a size 10. And you can, Josh says he does these in 10s and 14s. Um, when he mentioned 14s, I, I need to tie some 14s for myself because uh, I think this is going to be a cool fly in a little bit smaller sizes. Um, obviously, you know, any still water situation, there's going to be dragonfly nymphs and, uh, um, you know, carp and bass fishing. Josh is a, uh, a bass guy for sure. Uh, and he said he always has bass at the, at the forefront of his uh, thoughts when he's coming up with the pattern. But, um, I could sure see that being an awfully good carp fly too, um, and Josh confirmed that as well. Uh, just one step ahead, man. Um, but gosh, what a cool little fly, huh? Um, so we're going to tie this on this 450 BL, um, size 10, and I've got some dot Vivas in light olive. So I'm going to start this thread just up here behind the upright, and I want to make a thread base all the way up to the hook eye, so down the upright and back up again. Um, and one of the things that threw me off when I first started tying this fly is I wanted to tie the eyes too far forward. You want to leave the eyes a little further back. Um, so I'm going to take a, uh, a pair of black bead chain, black metal bead chain eyes. These are size medium for a 10. And I'm going to tie these in um, on the flat part of the hook shank. And I'm going to use X-wraps to do this. Um, go back and forth, several turns each direction. Um, and I want to get that anchor down good and tight. And and really what I'm trying to do here, you know, obviously tie them down, um, but also build up some of the thread between the eyes. And then I'll take a bunch of turns between the eyes and the hook shank to anchor those further. Um, so I've got something that looks like that. All right, now I'm going to run my thread back to the bend and back forward again and then back to the bend one more time and at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the body and uh, um, you know I carried this fly in the shop for a long time and I, and I was never quite clear on how to build the body and uh, then I asked Josh in about and in about five seconds he uh, uh, explained how he does this um, what he uses is Senyo's laser dub. Um, this is a light olive color, but obviously, you know, whatever color uh, dragon nymph you want to tie. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to pull several clumps of this out, like so. And what I what I want to do to these is sort of align those fibers so you can see I'm just pulling that apart and restacking it. Kind of bundle that up again. I want to get all those fibers going, for the most part, all the same direction. Uh, nothing going crossways to it. This is a long fiber dubbing. So I just want to get those aligned. Um, then one thing I found that's handy to do is I'll take each end of this, and I'll take my dubbing tool kind of from the center of my, uh, where my fingers are pinched at the center, I'll just sort of sweep out toward the ends. That'll get anything that's that's trapped down in there. You can see there's a few fibers that are still going crosswise into a nice neat little bundle like so. Now I'm going to take this clump and I'm going to pinch it at the middle. Um, and I feel like I've got more than I need here, so I'm going to thin some of this out. I'm 
I'm going to pinch this at the middle and fold those two ends together. Um, so I've got a little nub here on this back end. And I'll pinch that in my fingers and kind of sweep this all together. And again, I go, go through this with my dubbing needle. And that just kind of gets everything, again, go in the same direction. So I just have a little brush of this material. Now I'm going to bundle this up. And I don't really twist it. I'm just going to bundle it up and pinch it tight in my fingers. And then just beyond the end of my fingers, I'm going to cut it off square. Now I'm going to come in and take a cigarette lighter. Are they still called cigarette lighters? Does anybody still use these for cigarettes? I don't know. Um, but at any rate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to singe the end of that, and then pinch it. Um, and you've got to want to kind of pinch and let go. It gets very hot very quick. Um, and pinch it and roll it in your fingers to form a little point. And you can see I can kind of inch my fingers back. Um, once I get that initial burn on there, I've got it bundled, and I can heat it up a bit. Now we're getting somewhere. Like so, until I've got a nice, neat little point on the end of that. And you can sort of kind of play with the how tight you've got that loop pulled um, to form your body shape. Like so, that's going to be our body. Um, now Josh says he likes to put a little bit of head cement or UV resin on the end of this. Um, probably not a bad idea to do. Um, I'm not going to do that now just so I don't have to mess with the, the head cement, but uh, you can see how that body's made. Pretty pretty cool little idea. Um, you can see there's some little fuzz on this body. Um, I figured out if I take the lighter and just whisk it around the, the body, it'll burn off all that little loose stuff. Um, so I've got a pretty clean, nice little model body um, that looks big but has got nothing in the middle of it. Um, and if you're like me, uh, that gives you a million ideas of how to do other things this way. Um, caddis pupa, anyone? Yeah, looks like a caddis pupa body, doesn't it? Um, also looks exactly like this dragonfly den. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this by this pinched in, um, and I'm going to tie it in um, at the bend of the hook. But what I want is the end of that loop to be right up against the eyes. And you can see we've got a few loose fibers here. I'm not going to sweat those for now. Um, but I'm going to lay this in, and I want it about a shank length long. So I'll kind of get my measurement. I'll lay that down and anchor that on the hook. And then I'll start to work forward over those butt ends. Now these butt ends just happen to be a little bit longer than where the eyes intersect. So I'm going to cut that off there. And then as I wrap forward over, you can see I can use that to jam right up against the back of the eyes. So I've got the bulk built into the hook shank already. I won't have to use so much dubbing when we get to that point. Um, you can see you can kind of play with this body now and fatten them up a little bit, like so. That was a pretty big epiphany for me when Josh explained that. I, uh, for the life of me, couldn't figure out what material he was using because it's got a little flash in it. It's got several different colors. Um, it's just plain old Senyo's laser dub. Uh, yet another use for that stuff. We've, uh, um, we've been using a lot of his stuff and it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, so you should have some of that as well. So then Josh comes in with a just a brown Sharpie marker. Um, and he's going to draw some bands on here. And uh, he's better at this than I am. Uh, because he knows how to keep it reasonable. I tend to want to make too many bands. Um, but the little sample that Josh tied for me had four bands. So I'm going to try to put four bands on there. Um, I'm going to go all the way around. Now keep in mind, this is tied on a jig hook. Um, so this is going to ride hook point up. Um, so you want to make sure that you get around the bottom side as well. And Josh makes these bands pretty thin. Like so. Just for some, some segmentation on that body. Then you can put your brown marker away. Alright, now we're going to take a single strand of perfect rubber, and this is in motor oil color. Um, and what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to catch this oh, an inch or two from the end along the far side of the hook. And I'll kind of stretch it tight and pull it back along the far side. And then this long front end, I'll pull back to my near side, almost pull it straight down and catch it with the turn of thread. And then I can angle it back along the side. 
so those legs are coming out the side of the abdomen. Um, and I'll just leave those long for now. Kind of tweak those into position as needed. Now we're going to add a little soft tackle collar. Um, and this is just a grizzly hen saddle feather. This is a whiting feather. Um, but really any grizzly hen saddle feather will work. This one's dyed olive. And I'm going to trim the fluff off the base. And then just a few bare barbs, or bristles I should say, down here at the bed. I want a nice little anchor point. And I'll tie that feather in right at the base of the abdomen. And the reason I left those bristles on is I'm going to fold this feather now. So I'm going to wet my fingers <clears throat> and stroke these fibers back toward the bend. And it's only going to be a turn or two, pretty sparse here, you can see. I'm going to take one turn, and just for the sake of, of being here, I'm going to put, come back around to where I started. I kind of started that feather on top. Um, so really that was about one turn, maybe one and a half. Then I'll anchor that tip out and trim them away. Just a couple turns over the stem, and you can see on the on the hook. Sometimes these barb uh, hackle barbs um, will catch on your hook point. Uh, just use your scissor tips to clear those back out of the way, like so. So just a short little collar there. All right, now we're going to dub the thorax, um, and Josh uses uh, Whitlock SLF dubbing, um, which is hard to get these days. Um, there's been, uh, it's not discontinued, it's just not uh, not been delivered for a while. This is a you know supply chain thing with COVID. Um, so what I did is made my, my best imitation thereof, uh, which was some uh, uh, caddis green hairline dubbing and uh, uh, some nature spirit, spirit peacock emergence dubbing. Um, and just about 50-50, 60-40, uh, maybe 60% rabbit, 40%. Uh, Antron, um, but you can see it's just a, a spiky blend. Um, I tried it with the synthetic alone, and uh, it's fairly coarse to dub with a little bit of rabbit mixed in there. It dubs much more nicely. So I'm going to take this dubbing, and I'm going to twist on a nice tight strand. Um, we're going to build a, a fat thorax here, but I still like this dubbing to be tight. I don't like to go about it too loosely. It just is much easier to maintain and build a shape if you've got a tight strand of dubbing. So I'm going to start to wrap this dubbing, and I start it just up here behind the eyes. I'm going to wrap back to the front edge of that hackle, and I want to fatten this up a bit, and you can see I can kind of tighten this dubbing down a bit as I go. And when I end, I want to end with bare thread hanging in the middle of the thorax. And at that point, I'm going to take the remaining piece of my... Uh, uh, perfect rubber, and I'm just going to form a loop, like so. And I'm going to lay this in on top and catch it with a couple, two, three turns. Now what I can do is grab each side, and I can slide that down along the sides of the hook. And I just want to square that up, like so, that the, so that they're sticking out the sides of the thorax there. And you can see when you pull on the thread, you can kind of flare them a bit more if you need to. And I'll take a little bit more dubbing. And I'm going to dub to cover that tie-off point. Um, now, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and dub the thread so that I can finish the, uh, the thorax and head up between the eyes. So again, a thin strand, very tight. Um, you don't need a lot here because there's not a whole lot of area. And I've tied several of these this morning and um, had too much dubbing on almost all of them. So I'm going to see if I can get it right this time. So just a couple turns to cover that tie-off. Then I'm going to fold that loop back and I'll put a turn right up against the front edge of it, you can see I can kind of wedge that in there. That'll help make those legs stick out more at a right angle. Um, you can, just while I'm here, you can spread these legs out a bit if you want to put an extra turn of dubbing between them. I can't imagine that makes a difference to the fish, um, but should you, uh, should you feel like you want to control where those legs sit, um, that's how you'd go about it. You can actually use that dub thread to, to push those materials where you need them to be. I'm adding just a bit more dubbing here, and I'm going to X between the eyes. Uh, I see I just need just a tiny bit more. See, I said I was using too much. Now I'm using too little. Um, you can always add a little pinch, and it's just going to take a bit. I just want enough to 
dub in front of that, uh, in front of those eyes and up onto this upright. And we are going to dub that upright. And I'll end with the bare thread just behind the hook eye. And I'll come in with my whip finisher and whip finish here from the bottom. Trim that thread out and come in and cut that loop. And you can sort of tweak these legs into position like so. Um, and what I, what I ultimately want to do is I want these back legs, the first set, just a little bit longer than the body. And then the second set I want just a little shorter than that. And then these front legs are about that same length. Um, and you can see I'm just sort of eyeballing. Um, if you need to trim twice by all means do it. But that is a what turns out to be a super simple, super realistic dragonfly nymph. Um, dragonfly nymphs are, are, you know, every every lake you've ever been to, um, or a slow moving uh, piece of water, uh, you've seen dragonflies. Um, so those dragonfly nymphs are present, and that's a big bite of food. Um, you know, fish get on those. That's that's a bug that they see. Um, not a lot of patterns out there for this one either. You know, that's uh, Josh said he was in a uh, entomology class and they had sampled a river. Um, he's from Texas, and I'm not sure which river it was that they sampled, um, but uh, they had sampled uh, some bug life out of the river, and it was, there was just a ton of dragonfly nymphs, and that's what uh, gave him the idea to start fishing them. But uh, there wasn't a ton of uh, dragonfly patterns to be found in uh, really the only one I can think of is the old Kaufman's dragon um, but this one maybe does that one one up um, pretty cool bug great silhouette really innovative tying technique um, like I say keep an eye out for old Josh Smitherman he's got some good stuff coming your way um, all right that's it for me I'm Charlie Craven with Fly Fisherman Magazine I hope you enjoyed that come back next month take care